So, I heard you're trying to learn how to draw anime, but you don't know where to start. Maybe you want to make an anime. I mean, I know you guys do. I get a DM on Discord asking me to make characters for some middle schoolers anime projects three times a damn week. Anyway, the problem you're facing is, you don't know how to draw an anime face. I was thinking of doing a full face drawing tutorial, but then I sat back in my chair and thought, how do I draw an anime face? Like, I draw them, but if I wanted to teach you guys the method that I used to learn to draw faces back when I started, then I would have to completely relearn the method myself. The way I draw faces has changed so much from when I started, so I figured today, I'll just sketch some anime faces and as I do, go over each step, how I fix problems with my proportions and lines, how to diagnose these problems with your drawings, and hopefully just give you a better understanding of the process. Before we start, however, join my Discord. We'll be holding an art contest on it soon, and the prizes are... Well, they're pretty neat, trust me. So, join, share your art, join our art competition. When I started drawing anime, I found it was a lot more helpful to use references from manga, as there's more depth to the line art and you can study the shading concepts the authors themselves use. Today we'll be drawing a few faces I pulled off the internet, each one giving a slightly different head angle than the other. I'm doing this so you guys don't have to watch me drawing the same thing over and over again. To start, we'll draw this panel of Tatsumaki. If you're in my Discord, you'll know I tend to draw a lot of Yusuke Murata's work. Why? Because his line work and understanding of proportions is actually some of the best in manga. You can learn so much just by drawing his panels. Every head starts with a circle. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle since all it does is act as a foundation. Since she's at a 3 quarters angle here, we'll place the center line of the face right here. The horizontal line tells you where the eyes lie. The eyes sit right below this horizontal line and I like to start with them as they help you out when you're placing other features on the face down the line. The further eye connects to the center line we drew earlier. So here I'm just putting in a very rough sketch of an eye. We're sketching, remember that. Eyes are about one eye apart from each other but at a 3 quarter angle, obviously they'll be a little bit closer than normal. Remember, the eyes themselves also won't be directly mirrored. Both their shapes and sizes vary. The nose will follow the center line, and I like to place the tip of the nose parallel to the edge of the circle. Of course, this will vary whenever the character is looking up or down, but you can usually follow that rule. For the actual cheek and jaw, I tend to add a chin line down here, and then work my way from the eyes. Keep it rough and sharp, there's no need to do anything too crazy now. And for the jaw, now you can see she doesn't quite have the giga chat jawline, so we'll just make a curve from the chin along to the edge of the circle. Notice I'm also watching the space from her eyes to the jawbone in the reference to help me place the jaw. Ears take many shapes, but one thing to note is that the top of the ear clears the eye line slightly. This is not always the case depending on the head angle, but we'll go over that in a bit. Now for the neck, all I'm doing is looking at the reference picture and following the curve. Note that female characters tend to have a much thinner neck than male characters. The back of the neck is coming down from right behind the ear, and we'll end it right about here. Now for the part that literally no one, and I mean no one likes, the hair. But don't worry, I have a solution to everything. I don't, but... Remember this center line we drew? Well if you curve it along with the shape of the circle we drew, you now have a guideline for a center part. Note that 90% of the time the head will extend past the circle. Us artists still haven't found a solution to that, but just make sure, as a wise man once said, add your cranium. Now all we're doing with the hair here is essentially extending strands from that middle part we drew. Again, you're just focusing on the reference and where the separate strands line up with the facial features. How far does this one sit above the eye? Is this one overlapping the ear? What about where this one falls on the cheek? It's important not to get lazy with the hair and just make scribbles. Like I'm doing. Uh... Oh, well. Notice how far the hair has extended past our initial circle, and also notice that the head is sort of flat at the top. This is the cranium. It's not a circle. It's the cranium. Now that I finished a rough plotting of the hair, it's time to add a few more facial features. I'm adding the eyebrow and the eyelids just according to the reference. The further eyelid follows the curve of the nose, also known as the bridge of the nose. For the mouth, all we're doing is drawing a small, I don't even know what that is, for now. Here I'm moving on to shaping the cheek a little bit, and you'll notice, whoa, it's actually starting to look like the reference. Around here I noticed her eye needed to be shifted slightly, so I quickly did that. Now for the body, we're just going to say screw it with anatomy and just eyeball all the bits and bobs. Of course, a general understanding of the shoulders, collar, and how they connect to the neck is, well, it's helpful. I'll do a body tutorial sometime in the future, who knows, but for now all I'm doing is shifting my focus to the reference and back and eyeballing. After I'm done with the shoulders and such, I'm going on to the review stage. Before you do this, I suggest just looking away for a minute or two so your eyes can reset. Trust me, you'll see a lot wrong once you look back. Here I'm adjusting the eyes, thickening the eyelashes, and adjusting the pupils. Pupils are important because the slightest adjustments can be the difference to your character looking healthy to resembling a burn victim. Oh, 
Have you ever seen a burn victim? Now I'm just adding a few more features, mapping out places where I need the shade and erasing guidelines, and there we go. There's our sketch. Again, it isn't a one-to-one -one copy of the reference, but that wasn't my intention in the first place. All I did is showing you guys the basics in constructing an anime face and giving you guys a run-through of my process one step at a time. Here, we'll draw this panel of Bakugo. Note that this next sketch will just be a quick rundown of my process as I think I give a rather detailed explanation on my techniques while drawing Tatsumaki. Anyways, the reason I chose to draw this picture is because he's in more of a side profile here. Side profiles aren't as insane as they sound. Depending on the style, they can be rather easy in all actuality, and all you have to do is follow the process and you'll learn it in no time. Another reason I chose Bakugo is because the author of My Hero has such straightforward character design and makes easy to draw and study features on his characters. Alright, so to start, of course, put in your circle, which is arguably more important at this angle. Our center face line will follow the outer edge of the circle, angle inwards since he's looking down. The eye line, of course, sits one third up the circle, and is angled down as well. Make the lines perpendicular, more or less. On side profiles, I always want to start with the bridge of the nose, coming down from where the guidelines intersect. From the point of the nose, add a straight line going down to where the chin will sit. He has a squared chin, so we'll add that on the other side of the guideline, and then we'll just end the draw anywhere for now. The eyes will sit right under the eye line, and here I'm adding his furrows in just for a little bit of detail. Now I'm just going to shape the nose and add a mouth, and all I'm doing is of course looking at the reference and adding lines. The nose usually comes in right to the guideline. Around here I notice his chin is a little long, so I shorten it up a bit. Fixed up his mouth a bit, and you can see basically his entire expression is already there. Add his ears in, sitting right above the eyes. The neck here, and then I'm just rough sketching his right shoulder. Now I'm just scribbling in the hair. It's an unwritten rule in shonen anime that at least two characters have to have weird spiky hair. And you know what? I love drawing this hair. Why? Because it's just so damn easy and oddly fun. Anyways, notice how far his hair extends past the circle we drew. All I'm doing is just drawing geometry at this point. As I move down the neck and shoulders, I'm using the reference as always and adding feature after feature. His clothes are straightforward as well here, and notice how the strap of his shirt is rounded at the top. That's because Bakugo isn't a piece of paper, he has a 3D form, which is also shown using the shading in the reference. Now, here's the fun part, his hands. I'll make a whole video on that at some point, but I guess for now I'll start by drawing a square for the palm and placing in circles for the knuckles. From here I'm just extending the fingers from the knuckles. A finger has two joints, three including the knuckle, so you just make one section at a time. Again, I'll probably go over this in a video sometime in the future, but I myself aren't the best at hands, so hey, give me some time to learn how to first. Finally I noticed the neck was a little long, so I just bring the head down a bit. And I think we're done with this sketch. It looks pretty good, right? Right? Okay, so I had two other sketches that I recorded and was gonna go over them until I looked at the length of this recording and... Yeah, it's way past my bedtime. So I figured I'd just wrap things up here for the day. If there's one thing you need to take away from today's lesson... Yeah, don't take away anything. What? No, no, I, I know that sounds bad. I'm just kidding, but in a sense, I'm being serious. I've been drawing for a long time now, and the methods I use for drawing heads are now are very lax. I really only use two guidelines in a circle. There are plenty more in-depth guideline methods that give you a place to put every feature, tooth and hair follicle, and mine is just, well, it's lacking. Not to say you couldn't use this method as a beginner. I started with the Loomis method, and less than a month later I had transitioned to this new method of mine. So really, just experiment. Be loose and messy with your sketches, and just go one detail at a time and enjoy yourself. Don't stress too hard over perfection in your sketches, that's probably the biggest things I've learned while drawing. Anyway, hey, remember those cool rewards I was talking about earlier in the video? Well, the only way you can get a chance at getting them is if you join the Discord. So join, come have fun, talk art, anime, whatever you want, just no hating on Chainsaw Man, that's my one rule. Anyway, that's it for today's video. I'll try to stay a little more consistent in the future, so don't worry. Like, subscribe, and stick around for the next one, eh?